So you thought I was bad. You thought I was connecting too many dots. But <laughs> Ned Price from the State Department and Biden's administration is um, claiming, <laughs> okay, so all right, he, he actually talked about this and the Biden administration claimed that Russia was going to stage a false flag uh, to blame it on Ukraine as a pretext to invade Ukraine. And this is what all the hype is about on the border of Ukraine and Russia right now. You have Biden sending uh, thousands of troops there. You have uh, other countries like Germany sending troops there and all of this. Um, and there are tensions building up. And Russia is also staging troops on their border uh, at Ukraine as well. So this is a situation that is heating up. And it's very reminiscent of the Obama administration you know, before Trump got in. Uh, where you had the uh, civil war in Ukraine. And I reported on that extensively at the time back in 2014 and 2015. Um, and I'm going to talk about that a little later because that relates greatly to this. And it shows how much deception and and how, how probably both sides are, are playing a lot of mind games with the public and with PR tactics and optics and false flags and stuff, all of that goes on. And I think we have a lot of evidence of that. And now we have the U.S. claiming that Russia is going to stage a false flag. And I'm going to show you this video. Um, and I've never seen, I've never seen anything like this before. This is remarkable. Uh, this is Ned Price. That's This guy is a spokesperson for Biden's State Department. He goes on to say, I'm going to play it. He goes on to say that Russia is going to stage a false flag and use crisis actors and all of this stuff that I, I'm just I'm just kind of like I don't even know what to what to what to make of this. It's it's hilarious. So so let's just check this out. And the likelihood that Moscow might create seek to create a false flag operation to initiate military activity. Now, we can say that the United States has information that Russia is planning to stage fabricated attacks by Ukrainian military or intelligence forces as a pretext for a further invasion of Ukraine. One possible This guy sounds like me, right? <laughs> yeah, but except usually I'd be trying to point out the false flags that the US is staging because I don't want my brothers and sisters, fellow American soldiers, going to fight a fake war. You know what I mean? Uh, or a war that just isn't justified based on a lie. So, obviously, my vested interest is for us fellow, fellow Americans not getting us involved in wars, uh, using our tax dollars to pay for wars that other countries are more interested in. That uh, Countries like Israel, for instance, in the Middle East. Countries uh, like, well, you, you know, NATO countries as well. And... Having my brothers and sisters, my fellow Americans and fellow, you know, even Canadians they'll send and, and you know, English, uh, UK, they'll send troops going to fight a war based on a fake pretext or an unjustified pretext or a lie. So that's usually my vested interest. But he's saying the same exact thing that Russia is gonna, going to do because, because, of course, look, I'm not like pro-Russia at all, but the whole point is. Like, if Russia would do it, the U.S. would do it. You think that, do you really honestly believe that but s somehow we have some sort of moral high ground as uh, as the CIA and State Department of Biden's White House that we would never pull something like this? I'm going to show you what the U.S. and NATO, in my opinion, did back in 2014 to justify a lot of their pretexts and to put out their propaganda during the civil war in Ukraine when Biden was in the White House, that was totally uh, a, a uh, basically like a staged situation with the color revolution in Ukraine that happened at the beginning of 2014. I did a whole entire like series of videos on this. Um, and then the, uh, the war that broke out, the civil war with the uh, Donetsk uh, rebels and the Russian rebels, uh, fighting the NATO forces and the, the Kiev sort of government in Ukraine. And that whole situation was a total crap show. Um, but now this is all ramping up again. Go figure. Now that Biden's back in the White House, it just went totally silent under Trump. I wonder why. I don't know. It just seems to me that this is uh, a continuation of, of the work that NATO and the Biden administration, or I should say the Obama administration before, that's what I 
Did I say Biden before? You know what I mean, right? The Obama administration um, doing to sort of like make Ukraine part of NATO because there seems to be some sort of disagreement within the world government, within the new world order between the Russian oligarchs and, and Putin and, and those sort of interests and NATO and the rest of them. Of course, they all work together at the very top, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of like you got to think of it as like multiple secret, secretive groups uh, working together, but also having disagreements and their own vested interests simultaneously. You know, uh, humans are just like that, right? So that being said, let's uh, continue Ned Price here. Option the Russians are considering and which we made public today involves the production of a propaganda video, a video with graphic scenes of false explosions depicting cor corpses, crisis actors pretending to be mourners, and images of destroyed locations or military equipment, entirely fabricate, fabricated by Russian intelligence. To be clear, the <laughs> this guy is claiming that Russia is going <laughs> to... I just... You know, if I were to come out here, I used to I used to talk about this stuff a lot, right? This stuff does go on, by the way. This stuff goes on. And every vested interest intelligence agency has been involved with and I see I'm in you I'm on YouTube. I don't even know what the rules are in regards to this. This guy just showing Ned Price from Biden State Department might be breaking the rules of YouTube. I don't know. But yes, these things do exist. Staging events with crisis actors organized by intelligence agencies and secretive inv groups uh, that have a lot of power within, you know, uh, military and government and just even corp corporate, you know, the corporate world uh, and the military industrial complex. This stuff really does happen. There has been events in the past. In my opinion, some even, you know, with with uh, being staged by People you might think are on your side, okay? Uh, intelligence agencies you might think are on your side, fellow Americans, right? <laughs> uh, that uh, were used to present a narrative to the American people to justify a certain action, okay? This thing happens all the time. And Ned Price is in agreement with me on this. But he's saying Russia's going to do it. Maybe Russia really would do it. I'm not saying they wouldn't. It's just kind of funny that this guy can come out and say a government would do that. And when I come out and say a government would do that, I'm labeled a crazy conspiracy theorist. When somebody like Alex Jones, love him or hate him, I mean, I'm not a fan of Alex Jones. Really, I'm, well, whatever. He does some funny things. But, you know, he came out and he said certain things about certain things, saying the same thing. And then he was called a nut job. This is the, the, the head of the State Department, the spokesperson for Biden's administration saying this. And, well, he does get questioned on it by an AP reporter. It's pretty funny. So check this out. The production of this propaganda video is one of a number of options that the Russian government is developing as a fake pretext to initiate and potentially justify military aggression against Ukraine. We don't know if Russia will necessarily use this or another option in the coming days. We are publicizing it now, however, in order to lay bare the extent of Russia's destabilizing actions towards Ukraine and to dissuade Russia from continuing this dangerous campaign and ultimately launching a military attack. Russia has signaled it's willing to continue diplomatic talks as a means to de-escalate, but actions such as these suggest otherwise. We will continue to diligently work together with our allies and partners to expose Russian disinformation and other hybrid tactics used against Ukraine. We continue to work to prevent any effort Moscow might make to justify further military action in Ukraine. We again urge Russia to stop its destructive and destabilizing disinformation campaign, to de-escalate tensions, and to engage in diplomacy and dialogue for a peaceful solution. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, this okay. is when... <laughs> An AP reporter comes in and just starts hammering this guy. It's actually pretty funny to watch. So let's watch it. What's his name? Uh, he's a reporter at the AP. That you're about to hear. Uh, Matt Lee. Matt Lee goes on to just hammer Ned Price. Okay, well, that's a, quite a mouthful there. Um, 
so you said actions such as these suggest otherwise suggest meaning that they suggest they're not interested in talks and they're going to go ahead with some kind of a what action are you talking about one the actions i've just pointed to uh the what fact action? What? The, the fact that russia continues to engage uh in disinformation well, uh campaigns. You, know, you made an allegation that they might do that have they actually done it uh, what we know, Matt, is what we what I have just said that they have engaged in this activity, well, uh, in this planning well, activity. Second, what but, activity. But let me let me because <laughs> because obviously this is not this is not the first time we've made uh, these reports public. You'll remember that just a few well, weeks I, ago. I'm sorry, you, made, made, made what report public? If you let me finish, I will okay. tell you what report we made okay. public. Uh, we told you a few weeks ago that we have information indicating Russia also has already prepositioned a group of operatives to conduct a false flag operation in eastern Ukraine. This is just so funny. Can we just take a minute here and just like really like absorb this? <laughs> I can't. I really just can't get over this. I just can't. Get, we have the State Department saying that that there's they're going to stage an entire thing with fake explosions. Okay, that Russia's going to stage the the whole thing with crisis actors <laughs> and like, bro, I just can't get over this. Are, are we just? I guess this is becoming mainstream now. I guess this idea of crisis actors and fake explosions and propaganda videos. Remember those ISIS videos with the uh, with the with the beheadings and all of this, and it was just like so, like thoroughly uh, you know, produced, and it was like high-end production and all of this i think i think a lot of this has been going on for a long time and i think what i really think's going on and we'll play more of this video but i just kind of feel like i should say this now i was going to sort of tell you this in a sec but what i really think is going on is um i think the u.s is i, th I think ned price might even be telling the truth i think maybe they have intelligence that russia was going to do, do something like this because they know, because they've done it, right? And so they figure, uh, but but they, they fail miserably at everything. The Biden administration are a bunch of losers. They're literally a bunch of losers. Look what happened in Afghanistan. I'm going to show you what happened in Kazakhstan with their fake color revolution with them in NATO, trying to stage a fake color revolution in Kazakhstan uh, that just miserably failed. And Russia just came in with paratroopers, paratroops, and just locked down the situation. Um, just a few weeks ago. And then with this, they're trying to say, oh, you know what? Maybe we'll just give the news media and the public the truth about what we know and what Russia is going to do. Like, we don't want them to know that false flags really do happen and that these crisis actors propaganda videos really do occur. But maybe that maybe we got to play some 5d chess here and then it just totally backfires on them because this reporter from the ap because they just suck at everything and this reporter from the ap is like wait a minute you're sounding like alex jones <laughs> so check this out i'll just keep playing it so that matt to your question is an action that russia has already well, taken it's an action that you say that they have taken but you have shown no evidence to to to, to confirm that and i'm going to get to the next question here which is what is the evidence that they, I mean, this is like crisis actors, really? This is like Alex Jones territory you're getting into. Um, what evidence do you have to support the idea that there is some propaganda film in the, in, in the making? I can't, man. I can't. Matt, this is derived uh, from information known to the U.S. government, intelligence information that we have declassified. I think you well, know. Okay, well, where, where is it? Where, where is this information? It is intelligence information that we have declassified. Well, where is it? Where is the declassified information? I just delivered it. No, no you made a series of allegations and would statements. You, would you like us to print out the topper? Because you will see a transcript of this briefing that you can print out for that, yourself. That's not evidence, Ned. That's you saying it. That's not evidence. I'm sorry. <laughs> what would you like, <laughs> He's, He doesn't I, know I, what I would... to say. I, I'm telling you, man. I think... It, the Biden administration, they're like incredibly evil, but I think you guys give them too much credit. You really do. Like a lot of you out there think they're just so smart and they're, and even the people above them, here's the problem, right? The people above them, these globalist types, the George Soros's, the, the Rothschilds, the, uh, you know, um, the Adelsons, these types are very, very intelligent. 
But a lot of their pawns, like this guy, Ned Price, like Joe Biden, like Kamala Harris, uh, like their media shills, like, um, you know, uh, Como and what's his name there? Uh, the fat dude, Brian Stelter. They're idiots. Even the Hollywood people, you know, like Whoopi Goldberg and uh, the girls at The View and, um, you know, what's his name? <laughs> uh, the guy who shot is it's it, the brain fart, the brain fart, the guy who shot someone on set. Come on. We all know his name. I just I, I Alex Baldwin, Alec Baldwin. Yeah, they're all kind of idiots, too. And they have a lot of issues. A lot of them are blackmailed into really corrupt and, and, and evil acts and, and things in their personal lives. And that's how they get into those positions because people in power have blackmail on them and say, Hey, you're hired because we got this on you and you have to do what we say. So that's how that systems run. Just so you guys know. And you know, this, this guy, Ned price has no clue what to say here. He is totally baffled. He's caught with his pants down and he has no evidence that Russia is going to do this. It could be a total lie. I just said before that I think maybe he's telling the truth that they are going to stage something uh, that the Russians are, but maybe he's just, they're just making it up and it's like a reverse false flag psyop probably. I don't know. I mean, really, we don't know. We can only speculate, but he has no evidence for what he's saying. Regardless, that's definitely a fact. It's just funny. They're going to this sort of level of rhetoric and, and narrative that we used to always talk about. We still do, uh, that governments do this and, and now they're, they're admitting that, that, but they're saying it to sort of bolster their narrative, bolster their narrative. So I don't know. I would like to see some proof that you, that, 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 that you can show that, that, Matt, you have that, been that, that shows you, that 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 you, shows that the Russians are doing this. Ned, I've been doing this for. A I long know that time. was my point. As, you you as have you, know. you you have been doing this for quite a while. You know I that have. when we declassify intelligence That's information, right. and I we do so in, in a means. In we do and so. I, and, we do so with an eye to that, protecting that sources Kabul and methods. Is not going to fall. I, I remember a lot of things. So where, where where is the declassified information other than you coming out here and saying? Matt, I'm sorry you don't like the format, uh, but we have declassified. It's not the format; it's the content. I'm sorry you don't like the content. I'm sorry it's you. I'm sorry like you are doubting just... the information that is in the possession of the U.S. government. No, I... I, what I'm telling you is that this is information that's available to us. We are making it available to you uh, in order uh, for a couple reasons. One is to attempt to deter the Russians from going ahead with this activity. Two, in the event we're not able to do that, in the event the Russians do go ahead with this, to make it clear as day, to lay bare the fact that this has always been an attempt on the part of the Russian Federation to fabricate a pretext. Yeah, but you don't have any any evidence to back it up other than what you're saying. It's like you're saying, we think we, we, we have information the Russians may do this. But you won't tell us what the information well, is. That, and then when, when, that, when you're that, asked... That, that is the idea behind when, deterrence, Matt. When, when, that is the idea behind asked, deterrence. And when it is asked, our hope that the Russians don't go forward with this. when information is, you say, I just gave it to you. But that, that's not what... You, you seem not to not understand, the you seem not to no, understand no, no, the man, idea of deterrence. <laughs> we are you trying to not deter to the, the Russians from moving forward with this type of activity. That is why we're making it public today. If the Russians don't go forward with this, that is not... Uh, ipso facto, an indication that they never had plans to do so. Uh, but then it's unprovable. <laughs> I mean, my God, what is the evidence that you have that suggests that, that, that the Russians are even planning this? Matt, you, I mean, I'm not you, saying that they're not, but you just come out and say this and expect us just to, to, to believe it without you showing a shred of evidence that it's actually true. Other than when I ask, or when anyone else asks, what's the information? You said, well, I just gave it to you, which was just you making a statement. Matt, you said yourself, <laughs> you've been... So, I mean, he does have a point. Like, they're not presenting any evidence to this. They're just saying, yeah, uh, Russia's going to... This guy, imagine this. Biden administration spokesperson, Ned Price, comes out on stage, says, Russia's going to stage a false flag with crisis actors, fake explosions, uh, fake people uh, bleeding on the ground, all this stuff, um, and fake people mourning. Uh, you know, crisis actors mourning the, the fake uh, deaths. Uh, and, the, and like AP reporters, their their heads are just exploding. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? <laughs>
<laughs> What's your evidence for this? Like, I, it, it's reasonable to, to, to ask that question, especially if, if you're not a guy like me who understands that this stuff goes on. Um, well, I'd still be asking that question. I'd still be asking questions, uh, you know, it's a reasonable question either way. Like, what is your evidence that Russia is going to stage something like this? Um, because I'd like to know. Like, I'd like to know personally. I'm sure Matt Lee would like to know at the AP. So it's just it's just hilarious. The whole thing is it's a total crap show. And so Biden's sending more troops, like I said before, at the Russia-Ukraine border. Um, 2,000 troops from Fort Bragg. Uh, to Poland and Germany. He's sending them to Poland and Germany uh, to, to, to prepare for a possible invasion of Ukraine from Russia. Now, you have other groups. You have Ukraine um, officials and former intelligence people denying that this is even going to happen denying that a Russia invasion of Ukraine is being hyped by the U.S., that Russia isn't going to invade Ukraine, or at least there isn't really much evidence of that, and the U.S. is hyping this. The U.S. media is hyping this. The Biden administration is basically shining a light on this and trying to make it come into fruition. And you also have the Ukrainian president, Zelensky, denying that a Russian attack on Ukraine soil is imminent. The president himself in Ukraine denying this. So it makes you wonder what's really going on. And I do want to sort of talk about what happened in Kazakhstan last month. Obviously, there was huge protests and a revolution. It was a color revolution. It was an attempted color revolution to do the same thing in Kazakhstan that happened in Ukraine in 2014, in my opinion, right? So if you look at where Ukraine and Kazakhstan is, these are countries surrounding the Russian border. You have Ukraine there uh, in Eastern Europe, and you have Kazakhstan in Central Asia on the more south, southern border of, of Russia. So it seems to be that the U.S. and NATO are trying to stage... Um, civil wars in the countries surrounding Russia to be able to install to be able to install puppet governments in these said countries uh, so that they have more of an upper hand on uh, on, on well I guess military um, what do you call it positioning and also there's the Turkey Qatar pipeline or was it the Qatar pipeline there's a few pipelines I want to build into Europe too gas pipelines uh, that you know, uh, having control of these countries surrounding Russia and in Central Asia and Eastern Europe um, with NATO and the U.S., having control of them and having puppet governments in these countries, it will greatly benefit them and their respective military industrial complexes and their politicians, right? Uh, so it's all about the money-making schemes at these, uh, these backdoor deals and everything. And they would kind of want to cut out Russia from this because it seems to me, at least, that Putin, although he's very much in line with m much of the New World Order, he's not fully in line and sort of has his own agenda. You know, it's a little bit of a breakaway group from this uh, sort of UN cabal that wants to uh, implement a, a Great Reset. So this U.S.-NATO attempt to use their NGOs and activist groups to overthrow the government in Kazakhstan and install a puppet government there... Uh, failed because Russian troops, <laughs> paratroops arrived and stopped the whole thing from happening. You remember it got really bad in Kazakhstan. There were videos of protesters, um, you know, you know uh, uh, getting very violent with police and basically overtaking the, the government there in, in Kazakhstan. And um, they were on the verge of a real revolution uh, and Kazakhstan couldn't deal with it, but the Russian troops arrived and prevented this from happening. Um, so this um, this <laughs> this stopped the whole thing. So that failed, and it looks like the whole Ukraine situation to get that stirred up again and to um, uh, cause another like civil war there or. 
uh, or a Russian invasion, or I don't know exactly what the plan is. It seems like the Ukraine president might be siding more with Russia now, like he was supposed to be a NATO puppet, and then now he's siding more with Russia, so they're trying to... I, I don't know exactly what the plan is there, but they're, they're saying all of this, and it's just outrageous and and there is no doubt that they want full control of ukraine and they wanted control of kazakhstan now we remember that in 2014 there was a flight and this was in july or march of 2014 flight 370 malaysia airlines now i talked about this quite a bit at the time and uh it just disappeared and they still never haven't found it it was a giant uh, Boeing 777-200ER jet that disappeared over the South China Sea, um, and and it, it never showed up again. It just totally disappeared. It is a mystery, total mystery. Little do a lot of people realize the same exact plane with the same stripes and everything. You can see this is so. This is MH370, disappeared in March or April, whatever it was, of 2014. And this is MH17. This is the exact same plane, Boeing 777, ER200. Same exact stripes in the plane and everything. Malaysia Airlines, MH17. All of a sudden, was shot down over Ukraine. And it was purported to be shot down by Russian rebels, pro-Russian rebels in Ukraine that were trying to form a government in federation out of Donetsk. And one of the uh, best attempts they had at it was a group called the Novorossiya, um, the confederation of basically Ukrainian, pro-Russian Ukrainians uh, in Ukraine. And this was gathering a lot of steam up until MH17 was shot down and it was a massive blow to all the all the momentum they were gathering to um create a unified front of pro-Russian sort of rebels in Ukraine to take over the government there and to control at least a large part of Ukraine that all went to crap when MH17 was shot down. Now, I talked about MH17 when it happened. The fact that you had the same exact like plane, even with the same stripes on it and everything, that disappeared three months earlier out of thin air. Still a mystery to this day where this plane went. It just disappeared. Still a mystery to this day. Disappe- disappeared in the radar. They have no clue, right? And then the same plane shows up in a, what I believe was a false flag over Ukraine, blamed on the Donetsk rebels, the the pro-Russian rebels that were about to create a unified front. But that all went to crap when this happened. It tells me that this was probably a false flag staged by the pro-NATO groups, uh, you know, intelligence agencies and the U.S. intelligence um, that uh, wanted their puppet government in Ukraine and out of Kiev to prevail. And that's exactly what happened, except for Crimea, which Russia invaded and took. But that was bound to happen. And so the the whole idea is, you know, these things do happen. I think they've happened in the past. And I think what your boy Ned Price is um, alluding to here is... Basically the same exact thing they did to justify their uh, goals in Ukraine back in 2014 with MH17 and that staged event. Um, You can look into all the facts behind MH17. There's a lot of just just a lot of stuff uh, that you can that you can point toward as indication of it being like a psychological operation very grainy shady video they presented of like just a like a vague explosion in the background claiming it was video of the plane crashing uh you know the grainy sort of skeptical footage of of like the 
rep, the rubble and, and, you know, the supposed, uh, you know, uh, victims and all of this. Um, and then all of the propaganda surrounding the event. I mean, it looks like, I mean, you can, there's no way to know for sure unless there were declassified documents. But I mean, to me, you just look at it, you look at the coincidence of it being the same plane that disappeared. It's like they, some, they did something with that MH370 plane. I don't know what captured it out of, you know, shot, shot it down or something or, or ha had it land, um, and took it and used it three months later in, in a psyop to, to, uh, justify their goals in Ukraine, uh, to put and prop up the NATO backed, uh, U S puppet government there and to discredit and really crumble and, and destroy the, uh, prospects of, uh, Nova Rossia, um, the confederation that was forming as a front against the uh, NATO-backed Ukraine government. So that's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think about all this. I just think it's hilarious. I just think, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in Ukraine, but it does look like does look like uh, some, some sort of conflict is going to break out. Uh, it could be just a distraction too, you know, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. Drop a comment below. Like, share, and subscribe here on YouTube on BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble. Um, by the way, sometimes Odyssey doesn't let me upload videos because the video is like too big or something. So I don't know what the deal is with that. But I usually try to upload every video on Odyssey too. But definitely subscribe on all those platforms. Also follow me on Gab and Twitter. If you want to contribute to the channel, I have Patreon and crypto addresses you can contribute to in the description below. It's been Press. Keep your head up, stay real, and no fear.